Hey folks, and welcome to Truck King. Today we have a cool opportunity to check out a vehicle you probably hadn't, haven't heard of, but you definitely should. This is the Ineos Grenadier. It's a bit of a throwback to old school off-roaders, but don't be mistaken, this is a modern vehicle in a lot of ways, and I'm gonna tell you all about it right now. So let's learn all about this Grenadier. And for that, I'm bringing in Rick from Ineos. Great nice to, meet to meet you, Rick. You. Yeah, thanks for having me out, man. Thanks for coming out. So I think, again, I said it off the top, I think there's still a lot of folks who probably don't know exactly what this is. So let's just start at a high level. You know, why does the Ineos Grenadier exist? Whose idea was this? And, uh, and, and what's the purpose of the vehicle? Uh, really the brainchild of Sir Jim Ratcliffe. He is an avid off-roader and really wanted a off-road vehicle that, that met all of his needs. and what he feels is the needs of a lot of the consumers that are true off-road uh, enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. So, and so British company, but French built. Can you talk about that a little <laughs> bit? Just sort of, it's basically a world product. <laughs> Brit British company, uh, kind of German help design. Sure. Uh, and then it is built in Hambach, France, which is where the factory is. Gotcha. So. Okay, cool. So yeah, let's talk about the vehicle then. So I kind of said it old school in a lot of ways where it's a ladder frame. Uh, it's solid axles front and rear. Yep. Um, what's the powertrain under here? It's a BMW inline six cylinder. Okay. Three liter turbocharged. Okay. Petrol motor. Okay. 282 horsepower, uh -huh. 332 foot pounds of torque. Got it. Kind of our own tuning. To, to give you more to, more torque in the lower ranges, which is what you want on an off-road vehicle. Sure. It comes standard with a, a Tremec transfer case okay. that, is a, that has a locker in it. Got it. it. Uh, if you get the Trial Master or optional on the Field Masters, you have Carrera front and rear axles with Eaton lockers. Got it. So yeah, we can talk about the models now, but I do want to say my understanding is you can pretty much build this thing up however you want it, right? If you want certain features but not others, you can kind of do that a la carte. Yeah, they have a what we call a base model yeah. where you can put whatever features or add-ons that you'd like, or you can select a pre kind of pre-constructed model in a field master or a trial master. Gotcha. So that's what we're looking at right here. So the blue yep. guy is the field master this and the white is the trial master. Correct. A and it seems the difference is the trial master you could say is the more hardcore off-road vehicle or it comes with more of those off-road features right out of the gate, right? Yeah. And a little more luxury in the field master. Sure. So the field master is going to come with the leather seats, the sure. heated seats, the safari pop-up windows, gotcha. um, the premium sound system. Trial master is going to come with the diff locks, the clean air intake, the auxiliary winch. battery, yeah. um, winch is optional on either one. Oh, okay, got it. Um, it is a red winch, about 11,000 pound cap uh, capability okay. with a remote, wireless remote control operated. Nice, so. gotcha. Um, let's take a look inside the tri or the Field Master while we're right here. Absolutely. Andre can show us it from the, uh, from the passenger seat there. So like you said, big, thick, comfy Recaros, which is nice, leather. Um, and then I think probably the most unique feature is everything up here above our head, if you can kind of see that stuff, Andre. So these are all your auxiliary power switches. And that's a lot of power up there. I mean, it seems like people are going to be adding light bars, fridges, Absolutely. whatever they want, right? It, basically anything you want. Yeah. Uh, you have, it comes standard with four, optional to get the eight switches. And those are already plugged in, already wired, so that you just take your light bar, plug it right into one of the outlets, and turn it on with one of the switches. Cool. And then we have off-road mode and the wade sensing mode. Can you talk about the wade sensing? Because that's pretty cool. Or waiting yeah, mode. Wade, wading mode. Essentially, it, this is capable of wading through about 32 inches of water. Nice. Um, and what that'll do is it'll turn off a lot of the auxiliary fans so you're not throwing mud and water up into the engine compartment. Cool. Um, yeah, otherwise, I mean, I would call it, it's very kind of industrial looking, right? Everything's designed to be big. And I think you mentioned this earlier, you can get everything with a glove on, right? So yes, it's big, big switches, and everything's and... operatable yeah. with, with big gloves on in yeah. case you're out in the cold. Yeah. Um, it's also yeah, like water resistant. So you got a little moisture on your hands. It's not going to damage any of the switches. Nice. And then of course, you know, I talked about some things being modern. What is this a 12 inch, maybe 12 and a half inch screen, something like that. Yeah, and, and it does have wireless Apple CarPlay and nice. Android Auto. Nice. And a Pathfinder navigation Very system. cool. So yeah, still some of those modern touches, right? Yeah. 
Awesome. Why don't we go take a look over at the uh, the tra or the, uh, the tra trial master? I keep mixing that one up too. <laughs> Let's look at the trial master because yeah, I, I love this. Uh, you don't call it a snorkel; it's just called a high air intake. Is clean, it? clean air intake. Clean air intake. Okay. I mean, nice to get that stuff straight from the factory, right? And this is always smart too. It's funny you can't mount these things straight forward, especially here in Canada, because they pack up a snow right away. So yes. you gotta have the mounting to the rear. I'm happy to see that. Uh, the roof rack standard on this model. It is optional. Oh, it's optional, okay. The, you have a, a full roof rack here, or they're an optional three-quarter rack if you want to be able to still open up your safari windows. Gotcha. And those are designed and built by Rhino Rack. Gotcha. Yeah, this thing just feels really beefy, and you have all these great attachment points for tying stuff onto it, down to it. Yeah, it feels really nice. Um, around the back, it's pretty unique to see the ladder here. What's the, do you know the weight rating on the 380 ladder? 380 pounds on that the ladder. That means I can climb up it. That's important. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you didn't have the, the rhino rack, you yeah. could still get up on the roof. Okay. It holds about 300 pounds. Okay. If you have the rhino rack, it holds about 900 pounds. That's static. Got it. Got it. And of course, nice spare tire mounting there. Easy to get to. And I like how the doors swing open. And it's obvious you guys, you know, the rear seat space seems decent, but it looks like somebody prioritized this space and said, we need to make sure this customer gets a lot of storage. Is that fair to say too? Absolutely. Yeah. And easily stackable. It's very square. For sure. And um, D-rings. You can see these D-rings up here. So again, nice spots to tie stuff down with bungees or straps. And then yep. uh, the rings on the floor, right? Or the movable cleats down here in the floor. Yep. In the L-Track tra can... design, you can yeah. get many different accessories for that to, yeah. to attach to it. Very cool. Oh, am I backwards there? Yep. <laughs> it still closes though, that's funny. Absolutely. A lot of them still and, won't, right? And the design for that is in case you have the door open and you have your camping stove on it, mm, you can still close, close your ladder to get up onto the roof that's if you forgot something That's actually really there. smart. Yeah, often when you have those kind of doors, the one door won't close without the other one, right? Yeah. Well, very cool. I think the last thing we got to hit are uh, when it's going to be going to become available in both the US and in Canada, because we have viewers on both sides of the border, and then uh, pricing. So ordering is opening up uh, at the end of this month, in okay. May, beginning of June. Okay. Um, and delivery for the US, the end of 2023. Okay. For Canada, first quarter of 2024. Gotcha. And you know the prices both sides of the border? Uh, base price is about 72 US. Okay. And about 92 Canadian. Cool. Awesome. I mean, it seems like a really unique product on the market, no doubt about that. But the most important part is going to be how it drives. So we're going to go hit the trail now and see. Thanks Absolutely. a lot, Rick. I appreciate yeah. it, man. Thank you. Now let's take a look underneath the Ineos Grenadier, starting at the front, nice exposed tow hooks and this steel bash plate. And it just strikes me how thick this thing is. There's no flex to this whatsoever. It is strong. Now, as we roll back, this is sort of a classic four x four setup. You're getting solid front axle, solid axle in the rear. You get your transfer case directly in the center of the four x four system. That is where you want it. Uh, the thing that really strikes me underneath here is how beefy these components are. All of these steering components, they're serious. Now up in here, you can see high box springs and you're getting those all the way around on this unit uh, as we roll back one major skid plate that's right there for the fuel tank you're getting nice rock sliders there on the outside uh, sort of in the middle here this is a little bit of just kind of beefy componentry but that's going to act as a skid plate right there too and then at the very rear you get a rear end skid plate that's not something you see too often but it's nice you know departure angle wise when you're coming off of an obstacle not to drag your bumper back there you actually get a skid plate now talking about angles it's a 36 degree approach and departure angle here and 10.4 inches of ground clearance which are pretty dang good off-road numbers. Now it's time to go for a drive and see how those actually feel out on the trail. Well, folks, here we are now off-road here at Mo Sport. So we've got Rick riding shotgun, and then you guys all recognize Andre from TFL in the back. Andre's been helping me shoot a little today. I've been helping him a little today, yes. or mostly I've been annoying you, right, Andre? No, no, no. Uh, you introduced <laughs> me to your mosquitoes here. Yeah, exactly. He's learning all about Ontario bugs. <laughs> and trust me, this is not half bad out here today. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, very first impression, and I kind of listened to everything Andre had to say too, but the first impression is just the driving, the seating position. This is an off-road seating position. You're up tall, you're, you're really good clearances. The flat fender's up there too. Again, a little reminiscent of a Defender. You can see the fender, you can see exactly where it falls off, so you know exactly where that tire is up there. That's always the kind of first crucial thing I look for, right? Is how, how do I see the vehicle? How does it feel around me? And this is obviously somebody who goes off-road, you know, set this up. <laughs> yeah, great visibility all the way around, very little blind spots. Totally. Nice, so we are in low range right now. 
So needless to say, you can feel the torque instantly. Uh, now we're gonna go up this hill. So yeah, Andre, if you don't mind, I'll get you to hop out and shoot us coming up here because this is a good test of the lockers uh, and it's on a nice incline. Got it. And uh, it's full-time four-wheel drive, correct? Full-time four-wheel drive. You have high, low, um, and then you have locked either in high or low. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And then I see the off-road mode. What does that button actually do if you were to hit off-road mode? Off-road mode uh, turns off your parking wow. sensors, turns off your seatbelt shine. Ah. It'll allow you to open up the door if you need a little more uh, close visibility of the tire. Okay, I, I love the parking sensor thing because it's a stupid thing, but every modern off-roader yeah, has them and you're always looking for that button you when you're out in the swamp already. Yeah, <laughs> you, when you're out on the trails and close to the bushes, you don't want the beeping going yeah. off and annoying you oh, the whole yeah. time. Yeah, we've had we had one on camera where this truck was beeping the whole time and <laughs> all the comment section was just like, what are you guys doing? So I love that. Oh man, that was easy. Yeah, that was good articulation. We are aired down a little bit, so the tires are really grabbing, but you just felt the articulation to there. It didn't even feel like it lifted a tire. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. You made that look cool. easy. The vehicle made it look easy, man. The vehicle I, makes a lot of things honestly, look easy. And I was saying that like it didn't feel like it even really lifted very much and uh, the, only the rear was locked We didn't have to lock up the front. No, I don't think you lifted the tire on that one. Well, though that's all articulation then doing its job Now we got some of the bigger ruts coming up over here So there is hill descent control uh, on this vehicle It will control you coming down the hill. The oh. one we're driving today is a prototype so it doesn't uh, want to kick on for us, but I totally understand Hilda's thing. You can put it in manual mode, shift it over to manual and throw it into first gear. Okay. It will stay in first gear. So my foot's off the brake now, this is all gearing. That's honestly pretty dang slow as it is. And exactly, it's nice, it sticks it in first gear. Well, old school. Cool. This is old school Hilda set <laughs> control, right? It's called low gearing. Um, but yeah, so that works really nice as well. And of course, same thing, if you're in off-roading or if you are off-roading it's nice to be able to lock your gear because occasionally yeah you don't want it to shift right you don't want that sudden lurch so. yeah you want it to stay in the gear that you want it exactly i like that okay andre i'm gonna put you back to work here buddy all right i'm gonna jump out okay sounds good deploying <laughs> deploying andre <laughs> All right, so coming through, I mean, what might be the most challenging uh, off-road obstacle we have here today, these big offset ruts. So we're just locked up in the rear right now. I'm going to try to hold a little momentum coming through. But I barely got to touch the throttle. I mean, the power is right there. And so far, it's basically just creeping through on its own. <laughs> I almost didn't have to throttle at all. Oh, oh, oh. Beautiful. Once again, I think it lifted a tiny bit there, but that's the real key is the articulation feels really good with those solid axles. It's just keeping itself in contact with the ground the whole time. Um, this definitely feels like a, like a mountain goat, exactly how you want it to feel. Definitely a low speed kind of rock crawler type feel where you can just kind of get over anything if you're crawling up it in low range, you know? Absolutely. Well, I think the purpose of the Grenadier is, is pretty clear. It's it's a hardcore off-road machine. And again, let's be honest, even the, the G-Wagon and the Defender, everything's moved to independent front suspension. That's where everything's getting a little soft, quote unquote. And this thing hasn't, you still have solid axles here. So uh, definitely appreciate that aspect of it because it's you know bucking industry trends a little bit. Although again, I think we can be totally honest when we say a lot of these customers may never go off-road and might just be looking for something that's not a G-Wagon just to stand out a little bit and I think this checks that box too there are just some people who want a vehicle that's different special unique and that's that's what you guys have here as well so. absolutely it is it is very unique and it is it's its own vehicle no doubt about it so yeah definitely uh, gonna be a fun product to watch in the marketplace and sort of see how uh, how people react to it here in North America because it's already for sale in Europe but uh, yeah excited for it to get here yeah me too <laughs> Well, folks, we're coming to the end of this one. Now, like I mentioned, Ineos is going to be on sale in the United States at the end of 2023 and here in Canada at the beginning of 2024. But this is what they're doing right now. They're holding events like this to show the vehicles to reservation holders so they can come out, taste, touch, feel it, and then decide, you know, how they want to spec it out. So it's exciting always to see a new brand that is launching, especially in the off-road space. And I can't wait till they get here so we can see how they actually sell. So like I said, that's it for this one. Go in the comments below let me know what you think of the Ineos Grenadier and as always while you're down there don't forget to hit like hit subscribe hit join to become a member of trucking and then come right back here to see what we're testing next see ya